Gentlelady from Texas. Yes. Ms. Escobar votes yes. Gentleman from North Dakota. No. Mr. Armstrong votes no. All members voted. Clerk will tally and report. Mr. Chairman, there are 12 ayes and 15 noes. The, the motion to adjourn is not agreed to. Gentleman, gentleman from California yields back. He yielded back. Well. He yielded back. Oh, I'm sorry. Um, the, Chair I yield back. Chair recommend myself. I would just I would just say this. Why didn't they hold me in contempt? I moved to why hold did, your why didn't the, why didn't the, why didn't the committee hold me in contempt? They certainly could have. It was a completely with the partisan gentleman moved. Would the gentleman yield? <laughs> and I'll explain why. No, no, no. The, well, I, in a second, I want to I want to finish my uh, my time here. It was a completely partisan committee. Why not do it? I mean, the idea that you if you could have held the, the future speaker of the house, the future chairman of the judiciary committee, the, the freedom Caucus, in, in contempt. Why didn't you do it? I think they didn't do it because they knew it was bogus. They knew that the speech or debate clause is, would not allow them to compel someone in the con member of Congress to come testify. The but by the way, the by the way, I never said I wouldn't testify. I wrote an 11 page letter to the chairman, to Chairman Thompson. I'm still waiting on a response where I spelled out all the concerns we had with this committee, will, all the things we had caught them saying that were not accurate. Will, will the gentleman yield? No, no, I, I, it's my five minutes. I'll yield and we, we'll have plenty of time. Right. I'm sure there'll be a, a, a debate. They never made a record of it. We made a record of Hunter Biden not showing last week. We actually had a re court reporter there. We made a record of him not showing up for his deposition when he was overdoing a press conference uh, on, uh, on the Capitol, outside the Capitol. So, um, I think, the, I, think the, I think the Democrats know how ridiculous that was. And with that, I would yield to the gentleman from California. Uh, I think the chairman, uh, my colleague, Mr. Swalwell, uh, who participated in that contempt by uh, asking for and holding that press conference for Hunter Biden, knows very well the history. Sir, are you worried about being held in contempt? If you guys can see this right now, we are with Hunter Biden. Who's this guy? Come on. Make a hole. Make a hole. There you go. Make a hole. Put the hand left to right. Put the right. Put the people out of the way. That doesn't help. Put the way. Sorry, it's a little crowded right here, guys. Hunter Biden is not talking, but he is walking in right now to the hearing. Thank you. Sir, are you worried about being held in contempt? If you guys can see this right now, we are with Hunter Biden. Who's this guy? Come on. Make a hole. Make a hole. There you go. Make a hole. Put the hand left to right. Put the, right. Put the people out of the way. That doesn't help. Put the way. Sorry, it's a little crowded right here, guys. Hunter Biden is not talking, but he is walking in right now to the hearing. He complied and, uh, with the subpoena. We, 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 uh, we would have. Time's expired. We would have loved that. Do any other compliance. members wish to be heard? Mr. Chair recognizes Ms. Mays from South Carolina. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, uh, Chairman Comer. Um, first of all, my first question is who bribed Hunter Biden to be here today? That's my first question. Um, second question, you are the epitome of white privilege, coming into the Oversight Committee, spitting in our face, ignoring a congressional subpoena to be deposed. What are you afraid of? You have no balls to come up here and- M Mr. Chairman, point of inquiry. Mr. Chairman, um, if the, the lady recognized if, 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 if the gentle lady Chris, wants to hear from Hunter Biden, we can hear from him right now, Mr. Chairman. Let's take a vote Christ, and hear from I'm Hunter speaking. Biden. What are, are you afraid of? Hold on, hold on, hold on. Order, order, order. Are women allowed to speak, are, order, order, order. To are women allowed right. to speak in here or no? Are, okay. are women allowed to speak in order. here or no? Did you keep interrupting me? I, I'll interrupt the you chairman. Keep interrupting. I don't know that he's a lady. I think that that Hunter Biden should be arrested right here, right now, and go straight to jail. Our nation is founded on the rule of come law on, come on. and the premise come that on. the law applies to equally to everyone no matter what your last point of order mr chairman um, point of it order doesn't matter who you are point of order mr chairman biggs over Donald here Trump Jr. Biggs over here uh state your point mr. Biggs. Yeah, my, my point of order is this are we going to continue on with with this blatant interruption 
It, this, this is absurd and inappropriate. I intend to give my statement. I don't intend to have anybody interrupt it. I'm not going to interrupt your statements. I think you should have decorum and courtesy and don't act like a bunch of Nimrod. You just interrupted a woman. And, and that's five. You know, I got, I got we, permission. Can we I agree? Did, Everyone Mr. has Mr. five Chairman, minutes. Can we agree? Point, point of order again. The assertion that I interrupted was absolutely false. That's typical of the gentleman who spoke it. I got permission to speak from the chairman. I spoke. I was interrupted yet again right. by the gentleman who doesn't choose to go through the chair and follow proper order. I encourage us, I, I, I think if we're going to have any respect at all, we need to have proper decorum. Well, you're well said, well said. I'd like to finish. The rules are everyone's going to be recognized for five minutes. Anyone that wants to be recognized will be recognized for five minutes. Ms. Mace has four minutes and 13 seconds left. Chair recognizes it, Ms. Mace. It does not matter who you are, where you come from, or who your father is, or your last name. Yes, I'm looking at you, Hunter Biden, as I'm speaking to you. You are not above the law at all. The facts in this case are crystal clear. This committee used and issued a lawful subpoena to Hunter Biden, a critical witness in this committee's investigation into Biden family corruption. Hunter Biden and his lawyers did not claim privilege of any kind because clearly he has none. They didn't contest the legitimacy of our reasons for issuing this subpoena, no reasons, because they clearly are legitimate. And yet he refused to comply. Uh, Trump's family members, Don Trump Jr., he, uh, he, did not defy a congressional subpoena. He showed up multiple times for multiple depositions for several hours. Um, in doing so, you know, Hunter Biden broke the law. He did so deliberately. You did so flagrantly. You showed up on the Hill, on the Senate side, the day of that congressional subpoena to defy it and spit in the face of this committee. That's what you did. The question the American people are asking us is, what is Hunter Biden so afraid of? Why can't you show up for a, de a congressional deposition? You're here for a political stunt. This is just a PR stunt to you. This is just a game that you are playing with the American people. You're playing with the truth. Um, Hunter Biden wasn't afraid to sell access to Joe Biden to the highest bidder when he was in elected office. He wasn't afraid to trade on the Biden brand, peddle influence, and share those ill-gotten gains with members of, of his family, including Joe Biden. He wasn't afraid to compromise the integrity of the presidency and vice presidency by involving Joe Biden in shady business deals with our foreign adversaries. But Hunter Biden, you were too afraid to show up for a deposition. And you still can't today. Um, I believe that Hunter Biden should be held completely in contempt. I think he should be hauled off to jail right now because it wasn't long ago, too, my friends on the other side of the aisle, um, that you also believed in the, the power of a congressional subpoena. Not long ago at all. You believed in holding those who refused to comply with a congressional subpoena accountable. And I stood with each and every one of you. I am the only member in this room today who has held a member of my own party in contempt of Congress for not showing up for a subpoena. And I see nothing but complete hypocrisy on the other side of the aisle. The ranking member of this committee even so eloquently put it, the lesson is please tell your children out there in America, if you get a subpoena to go before Congress, go. You have a legal responsibility to do so. So the hypocrisy is stunning. What are we to tell our children today? There's nothing the other side can say with a straight face. As the only member of this committee to vote to hold a member of contempt of my own party, let me be clear, this should not be a partisan issue. If Congress issues a subpoena, you show up, period. This is not a responsibility we take lightly. It brings no joy for us to do this, but the president's <laughs> son broke the law and must be held accountable in the same way anybody else mm -hmm. would. I urge my colleagues on both sides of the aisle to do so. And my last message to you, Hunter Biden, you play stupid games, you win stupid prizes. And will I the gentle lady him. yield for a question? Will the gentle lady yield? Will my friend yield from South Carolina? Sure. Um, I, I do want to commend the gentle lady who was the only Republican who stood up uh, and voted to hold in contempt the Republican members of the House who blatantly and categorically refused to comply with subpoenas that came from the bipartisan January 6th committee. I would like to ask my friend Ms. Mace from South Carolina um, whether she's aware of all the case law which says that the committee has to engage in good faith interaction 
with the witnesses they've called and they're supposed to arrive at a solution. And what do you think about the fact that the chairman on multiple occasions gave this witness the opportunity to come before the full committee and he agreed to that? We issued a congressional subpoena, and I know with your constitutional law background, you know exactly what that means, and he should have showed up. And because of your vote and because of your statements, you should be voting to hold, hold this man in contempt of Congress today, right now, if you're going to be consistent on your own policies and your own words. Gentlelady's time's expired. Chair, recognize Mr. Moskowitz for five minutes. Oh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. It's good to see you after a long break. So. I'm listening to the gentlelady from South Carolina about the witness being afraid to come in front of the committee. It's interesting. He's here. He doesn't seem to be too afraid. In fact, for some reason, the chairman, who on multiple occasions invited the witness to come on TV, Apparently, the chairman wants to pretend like his statements on television or in interviews don't matter. But it didn't happen once. It didn't happen twice. It happened multiple times. The chairman said the witness can choose whether to come to a deposition or to a public hearing in front of the committee. The witness accepted the chairman's invitation. It just so happens the witness is here. If the committee wants to hear from the witness, and the chairman gave the witness that option, then the only folks that are afraid to hear from the witness with the American people watching are my friends on the other side of the aisle. I don't know if there's a proper motion, Mr. Chairman, but I'll make a motion. Let's vote. Let's take a vote. Who wants to hear from Hunter right now, today? Anyone? Come on. Who wants to hear from Hunter? The motion's out of order. Yeah. No one. So I'm a visual learner, and the visual is clear. Nobody over there don't want to hear from the witness. Biden. Let me start again. Hunter Biden was and is a private citizen. Despite this, Republicans have sought to use him as a surrogate to attack his father. And despite their improper partisan motives, on six different occasions since February of 2023, we have offered to work with the House committees to see what and how relevant information to any legitimate inquiry could be provided. Our first five offers were ignored, and then in November, they issued a subpoena for a behind-closed-doors deposition a tactic that the Republicans have repeatedly misused in their political crusade to selectively leak and mischaracterize what witnesses have said. What are you going to do on the House? Last fall, Chairman Comer made an explicit offer that people like Hunter and had, like him, the option to attend a deposition or a public hearing, whichever they chose. Hunter chose a hearing where Republicans could not distort, manipulate, or misuse that testimony. Honor, and then ignoring that invitation, and proving once again that they cared little about the truth and wanted only to, quote, move the needle of political support, which was a quote Chairman Comer confessed was his true purpose. The Republican Sir, chairs today, then, are commandeering an unprecedented resolution to hold someone in contempt who has offered to publicly answer all their proper questions. The question there is, what are they afraid of? Thank you. Did you show up to test? Why did you show up today? Why did you put your dad on speakerphone if he had nothing to do with your business? You put him on speakerphone multiple times to talk to your business partners. Why did you do, why did you do that? Stop. 
Yes. But why did you need to talk to him during business meetings if he had nothing to do with your business? Okay, what you have been watching, pure congressional mayhem. The House Oversight Committee. Uh, excuse going? me, Hunter. Oh, apparently, no. you're afraid of my words. Uh, here goes. <laughs> oh. I like to reclaim my time, Mr. Chairman. Wow, that's too bad. <laughs> mm -hmm. I think it's clear and obvious for everyone watching this hearing today that Hunter Biden is terrified of strong conservative Republican women because he can't even face my words as I was about to speak to him. What a coward. And this is also a coward that sat right here in front of Mickey Babbitt, Ashley Babbitt's mother, who was murdered on January 6th by Michael Byrd, the Capitol Police officer, and the you want to talk about a committee, a political sham? I'll totally, totally disagree with you, uh, uh, Ms. Mace. That January 6th committee was not bipartisan. It was a complete setup to go after President Trump, go after Republicans, go after anyone that believes in free and fair elections, people that believe the Department of Justice should be fair and balanced, not a political weaponized department of, of the federal government that is targeting President Trump, his supporters, people that walked in the Capitol on January 6th, and now people that stood outside the Capitol. There's been no justice for Ashley Babbitt's family. Michael Byrd has never been charged with anything. He was let off and he was given an, a, a promotion and, and allowed to walk free. And Hunter Biden just walked out. That is an example of not following the law. Hunter Biden thinks he's above the law. Don Jr., Eric Trump, Ivanka, Trump family members had to come in to Democrat subpoenas and be questioned by Democrats for over eight hours, each of them. Hunter Biden runs away. Hunter Biden did not come when we subpoenaed him. He did not follow the law. And then one of our colleagues, helped him evade his subpoena by going and, and reserving a press conference for him on his behalf, helped him evade the subpoena, helped Hunter Biden break the law. Let's talk about his own father's words. President Joe Biden said in October 2021 that individuals who defy subpoenas from the January 6th House Select Committee should be prosecuted. And the Justice Department in, indicted Steve Bannon for doing so in November 2021. Hunter Biden's father, the President of the United States, said that he should be prosecuted. Anyone that defies a subpoena should be prosecuted. Hunter Biden didn't show up for his subpoena. Hunter Biden showed up today to make a clown show of himself to show that he is nothing but someone that will not obey the law, that wants to show up when he wants to, and sits here with a smug look on, look on his face and runs away when it's my turn to talk. Not only is he a criminal, but he is a coward. Nothing but a coward. Let's talk about voting for things. We have members on this committee that are on record on their own Twitter accounts talking about, talking about people blowing off subpoenas on the January 6th committee that states the rule of law is stirring all over America. That's Representative Jamie Raskin right here. I'll enter this for the record. Representative Jamie Raskin, Steve Bannon has been convicted of acting in contempt of Congress. My argument with Rep Gates is now settled. If subpoenaed, you show up and assert any privilege you think applies to spe specific questions, but you can't blow off the proceeding. He blew it off. Walking in today is too late. We have to hold Hunter Biden in contempt of Congress because he's not above the law and neither is the President of the United States. And this committee has produced more evidence, more evidence than any Democrat ever dreamed of having against President Trump and his family. While they constantly make up lies and attacks about the Trump family and President Trump, uh, they make them up all day long 
It's nothing but a political witch hunt. This committee has produced the evidence that Joe Biden has taken payments through his son, Hunter Biden, and all their dozens of fake LLCs. You can't buy a Biden product. You can't hire a Biden for a service unless you're a foreign country and you're asking and paying for political favors and political payouts. And that is exactly what the Biden brand is all about. We will hold Hunter Biden in contempt. And if the Democrats are not the hypocrites that they constantly display that they are, then they will vote for contempt of Congress because they voted for it on every other subpoena that, that went, didn't go through. And here's the last thing. You guys had your chance. If you wanted to hold people in contempt of Congress, you could have done it last Congress, but you he yields back the gentleman from Texas is recognized. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. So this markup, it's about Hunter Biden. It's not about President Trump. I keep hearing my colleagues on the left talk about President Trump and that no one is above the law, and I keep hearing this argument ad infinitum. I guess what they mean is that no one is above the law except for when it comes to President Biden's son, Hunter. And Hunter Biden should not be given special treatment. He defied congressional subpoena and should be treated like others who have done the same, plain and simple. See, Hunter should not be treated with kid gloves. This man is 50 years old, literally. He's a grown ass man. Congressional Democrats held Steve Bannon and Peter Navarro in contempt of Congress for not complying with congressional subpoenas concerning an investigation to January 6th. Hunter had every right to appear and plead the fifth, and he chose to defy the subpoena when he instead held a self-serving press conference right at the steps of this building. When Democrats issued subpoenas to Republicans during the House January 6th investigation, President Biden said, and I quote, I hope that the committee goes after them and holds them accountable criminally, end quote. Okay, all right. Now let's do Hunter, and that's why we're here. Hunter Biden makes arguments of passion to excuse his behavior. His best defense is often times to make the public feel sorry for him. That's right, we should feel badly for him because he personally enriched himself because of his last name. And again, the left wants us to treat him with kid gloves, and this man is 50 years old. Please, your daddy's saving you at this point. It ain't going to work here anymore. You should not be given special treatment because he thinks he's an American prince. And I don't mean purple rain. A witness does not get to decide his preferred method of appearing before the committee. The committee that subpoenaed the witness does. That's how this place works. House committees we're not in the business of letting witnesses dictate to us the type of, uh, type of depositions or hearings that they want to have. This is not a kangaroo court like President Trump is seeing in the New York trial. It's up to the committees to determine the best methods that will further their investigation. And rather that be through deposition, transcribed interview, or public hearing. This is our job to do that. And Hunter Biden does not get to dictate that to us. And with that, I yield back the rest of my time. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I would, the gentleman will yield. I appreciate the gentleman yielding. I just want to... One of the rules. This is... I mean, it's Chair now recognizes Ms. Stansberry. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Well, it's always a wild and interesting adventure here in the Oversight Committee, and this morning certainly doesn't disappoint. Um, you know, I want to talk for a few moments about the resolution that's been proposed in the ANS here, because that's what we're here to debate this morning, and really the content of that, including the assertions about the investigation that led to the moment that we're at here today. But I am really glad that my colleague mentioned that we are a land of laws and that every citizen should have to comply with them, including members of this committee, not to mention a chairman, who was subpoenaed during the last Congress and refused to respond. So if we're going to apply 
these laws, then they must apply equally, I would think, to even members of this committee. And certainly to the front runner in the GOP's presidential election, which I'll get to in a moment. But let's talk a little bit about this ANS and about the background and correct the record a little bit. First of all, I want to talk about the evidence that was presented to this committee as part of this investigation. More than 62 thousand pages of records from the National Archives on top of 20,000 pages that were already made publicly available, 30,000 pages of private bank records, 2,000 pages of activity reports provided by the Treasury Department, dozens of hours of testimony from special counsel, U.S. attorneys, DOJ officials, FBI, IRS agents, financial advisors, friends, business partners, evidence provided by the Ways and Means Committee, and expert witness testimony by the GOP's own witnesses right here in this committee in September who sat right there at that table and said there was not sufficient evidence to support proceeding with an impeachment. In fact, there are numerous members of the GOP currently serving in Congress who do not believe there is sufficient evidence. So my question is, where are the receipts? You have reviewed thousands of pages of documents, countless hours of testimony, talked to expert witnesses, including your own witnesses, that can't provide a single iota of evidence of wrongdoing by this president. But last week, House Democrats released this. We have the receipts. In fact, they're all right here in the Mazars report. And for any of you that have not dug in on this report, I want to talk a little bit about what this report shows, because it's actual receipts from foreign governments who spent $7.8 million at Trump properties during his presidency while they were actively seeking to influence foreign policy and decisions by the administration. Will the gentlelady yield so, to the question? Let's talk about some of the receipts that are in here. Oh. Malaysia, over a quarter million dollars was spent by representatives of Malaysia while their ex-president was being investigated for a massive corruption scheme and which Trump's ex-fundraiser was indicted for illegally lobbying on. Saudi Arabia, tens of thousands of dollars spent by the Saudi government and by the crown prince and his staff Do you to a question? later give $2 billion to Jared Kushner's private firm. Qatar, tens of thousands of dollars spent by Qatar during what was described as a charming offensive and an arms sale to the government of Qatar by the Trump administration. Kazakhstan, thousands of dollars spent by the president of Kazakhstan on a controversial visit which raised questions about human rights violations, business dealings, and a money laundering scheme involving Donald Trump's properties in New York. So my question is, if the GOP actually cares about criminal activity, how about they investigate the receipts that we have right here? The Can I answer that question? of influence peddling by Donald Trump and a man who is currently facing trial in four jurisdictions on 91 counts of criminal activity who's been twice impeached by this body and is currently trying to run for president again. And I would love to answer your question. of this committee has already endorsed. This is not factually based. This is a farce. This is a political stunt, and it is designed to help Donald Trump secure the nomination this November. We yield to a question. So let's call it what it is. And with that, Mr. Chairman, I yield my time back to the chair. Remarks. Uh, I'd like to just add a couple of points to what you've said. On January 6th, Senator Ted Cruz described it as terrorism. They later came to attack him during their revisionist uh, Orwellian Stalinist attempt to rewrite history. Unfortunately for them, we know that there were 147 or 48 of our officers who were wounded, bloodied, and hospitalized by the uh, rabid mob that beset the Capitol that day. We know that Kevin McCarthy, one of their deposed leaders over on their side, called Donald Trump from his office 
to complain about how his people were storming the Capitol and putting people's lives in danger. And Donald Trump said, no, no, those aren't my people. Those are Antifa. And McCarthy corrected him and said, no, those are your people, Mr. President, to which Donald Trump said, well, maybe they just care a little bit more about who won the election than you did. Kevin McCarthy. You guys have got to deal with reality here. By the way, the speech and debate clause stands for the exact opposite principle who our distinguished new member uh, uh, just spoke about a moment ago. It says that members, that members of Congress Mr. cannot Chairman, be questioned Mr. anywhere Chairman. else other than Congress. So Point he should privilege. read the speech or debate Mr. clause Chairman. aloud. Let, 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 him, let him finish his sentence there. Now, Chair recognizes Mr. Burchett Mr. from Tennessee Chairman. for five minutes. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, my colleagues seem to want to talk about the justice system, so let's talk about it. November of last year, the chairman issued a subpoena to Hunter Biden to appear on December 7th, uh, December 13th, excuse me, for a closed door deposition. Instead of respecting the rule of law, Hunter Biden chose to give a press conference on the front steps of the Senate. To, so, to, to show such contempt for Congress without fear of repercussions highlights a theme throughout this administration and Democrat administrations before it. If you're a big name Democrat, then you're immune to prosecution. Former Attorney General Eric Holder said as much in a memo he wrote regarding collateral consequences. For those who don't know, the collateral consequence policy allowed prosecutors to consider whether charging a company or individual will result in greater societal harm than not charging them. It's why the banks weren't held criminally accountable to the fallout of the 2008 financial crisis. It is why Jeffrey Epstein's clients aren't behind bars. It's also the mindset of President Biden and his family, too big to jail. Not too big to fail, too big to jail. The two-tier justice system is a disgrace to our country and the principles it was founded on. I thank the chairman and the committee for the hard work they put in to hold the Biden administration accountable, but I doubt our Justice Department has the guts or the wherewithal to do anything about it. And I would like to yield my time to my friend from Florida, Byron Donalds. Actually, I, yeah, actually Ms. I'll yield. Yeah, yield let, me, let me yield to Miss May. She hasn't gotten enough quality well, TV time no. today, so I'll give her a little more time. Uh, thank you, and then I'll yield to my colleague from Florida as well. I'm going to try to be quick here because I was accused by my colleague on the other side of the aisle about my white privilege. I want to say, number one, as a former ranking member of the Civil Rights Subcommittee under Chairman Raskin last session, I take great pride as a white female Republican to address the inadequacies in our country. I come from a district where rich and poor is literally black and white, black versus white on most days. My largest jail in my district, which is the largest jail in the, sa jail in the state of South Carolina, has had seven or eight deaths in the last two years. And I was there with our black and African-American council members trying to get the right thing done. And I come from a district where black men have been killed by law enforcement, tased to death in our jails. And I've stood with those black families because I know the differences that they see day to day in their life. And I try to do the best that I can. I come from a district where the first African-American, first black man in the U.S. House of Representatives was Joseph P. Rainey, represented my district back in the 1800s with that. The last black member of the U.S. House of Representatives before Reconstruction came from South Carolina, George P. Murray. The, the, the black man, former slave, an entrepreneur who founded the Republican Party in South Carolina, one of the founding members was named Robert Smalls, who commandeered a, a Confederate ship and gave it to Union soldiers and served his country admirably in the process. In my district, it was Harriet Tubman. And you can see it in the movie, movie Harriet, who rescued more than 700 slaves in one night in Beaufort County, South Carolina. So I am very well aware of our rich history and try to recognize it as best as I can and the position that I have, and I resent the fact that you're going to throw that in my face up here. I'm one of the few people that you'll see on my side of the aisle trying to do the right thing to the right people every single day, and I would like to yield the remaining uh, balance of time to my colleague from Florida. Uh, this has been a very interesting hearing. Mr. Waltz, welcome to Oversight. Yes, it usually gets like this. Uh, look, let's be very clear. This isn't about Hunter Biden's white privilege. It's about Hunter Biden's Democrat privilege because Donald Trump Jr. showed up for five congressional subpoenas. There was never this circus where he was subpoenaed by House Democrats and he showed up on the Senate side or showed up at the White House to answer in some fake, phony, lame press conference, not actually going to the House and doing what he was compelled by a subpoena to do. Hunter Biden did that. 
And then he has the unmitigated gall to show up here when we know that he's, we're going through actually the, the legislation for contempt. With, by the way, Mr. Chairman, we should actually get to the legislation of contempt. The speechifying is great, but let's do our business members. Um, he has the gall to come here, show up, and then when the Democrats are saying, hey, he wants to speak, he leaves. This is a joke. This is a farce. The man has been subpoenaed by Congress. Oh, and by the way, the January 6th committee, Mr. Raskin, which you did sit on, by the way, that was not a normally ordered committee of Congress because Nancy Pelosi did not want the Republican members that's, that then Leader McCarthy put up. According to the courts, it was. I was my time, sir. Will you fine. yield for I, a, no, I will a not, correction? I was respectful of your time. I didn't say anything. So, ladies and gentlemen, let's move forward with our business. He should be held in contempt. There was a subpoena. He did not answer it. Any other American will be held in contempt by Congress. Any other. This is Democrat privilege of the highest order. Let's do our jobs. I yield. Gentlemen, yield. Chair now recognize Ms. Ocasio-Cortez from New York. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, just to address briefly, um, quickly, that, that moment about uh, privilege and, and all of this that we're seeing here. Uh, it was a very beautiful speech uh, by the gentlelady um, who, as she mentioned, was uh, helped lead on the majority, the now majority side, uh, the Civil Rights and Civil Liberties Subcommittee. But I think it's so exemplary of the point that she also oversaw the elimination of the Civil Rights Subcommittee on this committee, which really kind of gives the whole game away. We show up, we give speeches, we give flowery words, but at the end of the day, participate in the structural erosion of the rights and representation of people uh, that, that are marginalized, women, people of color, people that just need to see their due process and civil liberties protected in this country. But I will move on. As also the Republican side had mentioned in their many uh, raisings of the January 6th committee, that it's not just Hunter Biden, you, me, any individual subject uh, to, to equal treatment under the law, to be held up to accountability under the law, but it is also these committees and this committee that is subject to oversight and law. We must comply with the law here as well. Now, I may be one of the very few people that actually believes in Congress, you know, in this country, but I do, and many of us do here. And we have an obligation to engage in good faith participation to execute and comply with a subpoena. The chairman said in front of the country several times to Hunter Biden, you can show up here in front of the world, in front of the public. Hunter Biden took him up on that offer. He said, I will show up in public. I will show up in public. He showed up here today. He showed up here in the past. And Mr. Chairman, I know you do your best with what you've got, but you've got members here that have submitted falsified evidence to the record. You have members here that have submitted and mischaracterized closed door hearings. And people want to say back and forth at the end of the day, it doesn't matter what party it's happened from. You've got members who've engaged in revenge porn in this committee. So it is understandable why Hunter Biden would want to testify in front of the public for the American people to be able to witness that testimony uh, it, for themselves. You've got members who've defied subpoenas. You've got members who we are um, one year into the term asking what the rules are at the beginning of the committee, the book was given to us on day one. And so what we should do is allow the man to testify. I believe in the power of the oversight committee. Frankly, I believe in it regardless of whether Republicans or Democrats have the chair, because I believe that this committee should have the power of oversight. And we cannot do that on a partisan basis. And so for that, I implore this committee to allow Hunter Biden to testify publicly. I implore and I ask for that to happen. And we cannot do that by getting engaged in this back and forth on a, on a defiance of a subpoena. Let him comply. Let him do it today. Let him do it tomorrow. But let the man do it. And with that, I yield back to the ranking member. Thank you, Ms. Ocasio-Cortez. I think you went right to the heart of the issue here. Um, you know, if this ended up going to court, Mr. Chairman, and I hope it doesn't, I really hope that this committee will act in a way to negotiate and, and uh, achieve a compromise with the witness. But if it goes to the court, it's going to present a novel question. What happens when 
a committee represented by its distinguished chairman goes out in public and repeatedly invites and challenges a witness to come before the committee, and then that witness gives the answer, yes, I will come in. At that point, the committee pulls a bait and switch and says, well, we actually don't want you to come before the full committee as was offered repeatedly in public by the chairman, but instead, we'd like you to come to a back room and do it there in a closed deposition. Now, undoubtedly, if that had been the original offer, the committee would stand in a very good place, the way we did with Mr. Biggs and Mr. Perry and Mr. Jordan, because they were told to come in, they were subpoenaed, and they blew off the subpoenas uh, of the committee, which is why I don't think anybody should be voting on that side other than Ms. Mace, because Ms. Mace is the one who took the position that the rule of law means something. And I take the position, if we give somebody a subpoena, they should come in. But there's a very, there's a very sticky problem now. What happens when we give them one offer A and then switch it over to offer B. That's why I hope you will work it out, Mr. Chairman. Thank and, you for yielding. And, uh, gentlelady's time's expired. To, to respond to the gentlelady, he can come in for a hearing after the deposition. Now, yeah, recognize uh, Ranking Member Raskin. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, we believe that um, everyone subpoenaed by Congress, whether it's Hunter Biden or Jim Jordan or Andy Biggs or Steve Bannon or Scott Perry, should engage in good faith compliance with the committee's requests and the committee's subpoenas. We are here today because the chairman has bizarrely decided to obstruct his own investigation and is now seeking to hold Hunter Biden in contempt after he accepted the chairman's multiple public offers to come answer the committee's questions under oath before the American people. This is at the same time that they stand by the categorical non-compliance of Republican members of Congress, like Mr. Jordan, um, who have material information about Excuse the me. violent attack. One, that one, one moment. The cameras cannot be in the well. Cameras cannot be in the well. Cameras cannot be in the well. Yeah. Uh, proceed, Mr. Raskin. Thank you. But, but, but I was just uh, making the point that um, the, our colleagues um, who are uh, arraigning Mr. Biden today on charges that uh, he has not rendered 100 percent compliance um, allegedly with a subpoena are standing by Republican colleagues who've rendered zero percent compliance with their subpoenas, uh, including Mr. Jordan. Uh, Mr. Biggs and uh, Mr. Perry, when they have material information about the violent attack on the Capitol, the Congress, and the Vice President of the United States on January 6, 2021. In any event, for the last 11 months, the chairman has repeatedly refused, refused offers from Hunter Biden and his attorney to meet with the chairman and his staff and with members of this committee on February 9th, just one day after uh, the chairman's first led letter to Hunter Biden, Mr. Biden's lawyer responded and offered Chairman Comer to, quote, sit with you and your staff, including the ranking member and his staff, to see whether Mr. Biden has information that may inform some legitimate legislative purpose and be helpful to the committee. The chairman never responded. On September 13th, Mr. Biden's lawyer again wrote to Chairman Comer after a Newsmax interview in which the chairman falsely claimed that he never got a response back to his original letter. Mr. Biden's attorney explained the chairman actually never responded to his offer to sit down and discuss the committee's request, but stated that he remained available to have the discussion, but the chairman again completely failed to respond. Two months later, on November 8th, Chairman Comer and Jordan issued subpoenas to Mr. Biden requiring his appearance for a deposition on December 13th. In the cover letter, the chairman noted, given your client's willingness to address this investigation publicly up to this point, we would expect him to testify before Congress. Throughout the fall, the chairman urged Mr. Biden <clears throat> to come up here at a public committee hearing on September 13th. On Newsmax, the chairman stated, Hunter Biden is more than welcome to come in front of the committee. 
If he wants to clear his good name, if he wants to come and say, you know, there weren't 20 show companies, he's invited today. We'll drop everything. On October 31, on a nationwide podcast, the chairman stated, we have mountains of evidence. Now we're ready to bring them in. We're in the downhill phase now because we have so many documents and we can bring these people in for depositions or committee hearings, whichever they choose. For depositions or committee hearings, whichever they choose, and we can ask these questions with evidence. On November 6th, again on Newsmax, our good chairman stated, I will extend that invitation on your show right now, Rob, if the Biden family wants to join Tony Bobulinski in an official oversight committee hearing and answer questions that the American people have, then that invitation is open right now. They can come on in and do that. On November 28th, Hunter Biden, through his lawyer, agreed to Chairman Comer's multiple public requests. He agreed to appear precisely at a public hearing under oath to answer the committee's questions on December 13th. Exactly what our good colleagues, the Republicans who had information about January 6th, never agreed to do. They never agreed to testify anywhere under oath about what they knew. The letter that came in from Mr. Biden embraced the importance of having a public proceeding that, quote, would prevent selective leaks, manipulated transcripts, doctored exhibits, or one-sided press statements, especially in light of the committee's past use of closed-door sessions to manipulate, even distort the facts, Mr. Chairman, misinform Mr. the Chairman, public. I have an inquiry. State your point. Um, I, I, I'm, Mr. Mr. Chairman, don't we have House rules and committee rules uh, regarding uh, subpoenas uh, and then rules about having uh, hearings and, and having questions uh, with, with witnesses we that do. must be followed? Mr. Chairman, I'd like to reclaim my time. state the well, rules, uh, Mr. Chairman? Me, exa uh, hold on, hold on. We could just interrupt Mr. each other Rasmus, with an inquiry? You, your, your time was expired. I'd like to know the rules of the Wait. House and our committee. Read them. They're available to every member. The, the rules state uh, for a deposition, if that's what you're asking, three days' notice. You have to have the stenographer. First of all, thank you uh, for those who are open and for the gentleman from Florida for, um, for the proposal. I would certainly accept that amendment. Um, and for my colleagues on the other side who are at least having, willing to have a conversation about it. Um, this might be controversial, but let me say this. Uh, just to step back and take an objective position, um, regardless of who's the majority and who's the minority, these cases, if it goes to court, this is not the best set of facts for the House Judiciary Committee. Because we don't have, as we've talked about before, I won't use names because then it, then it gets partisan. But we don't have the best set of facts here. We, we, this is not somebody stonewalling and refusing to come under any circumstances. This is not somebody who's asserted a privilege that's been rejected but still re refusing to come. This is not somebody who hasn't produced any documents. Um, you've got somebody here who's put an offer on the table to come and testify publicly. So the question in a court would be, in absence of the negotiations and reasonable discussions that Congressman Klein mentioned earlier and some of you other members have mentioned as well, what's the record we would be sending forward at this point? Um, and would a judge look at this and say, or a court of appeals and say, yeah, you know, the House Judiciary Committee really made the effort to negotiate through this with Hunter Biden. Um, he offered to public te publicly testify. They didn't take him up on it, um, even though they said that, that he could do it at one point. I mean, why would we want that set of facts to go forward? And put the risk of, you know, if we have the court's rule against us, it actually undermines subpoena authority for this committee and this, and this chamber. So if we can move forward with a reasonable, let's give them 14 days, whatever number you all want to pick, but some additional time after the resolution goes, which increases our chances of actually getting the information that you all are saying you want, uh, as opposed to just moving forward with a resolution that's this strictly contempt, uh, criminal contempt. So I just ask, uh, and I, I, I uh, uh, thank the gentleman for, for, for the... Uh, reclaiming, reclaiming my time, I just want to point out... I this amendment? This amendment claims that Hunter Biden has cooperated with this committee's investigation. 
How has he cooperated with the investigation if he has not abided by congressional subpoena? Abby Lowell has never discussed scope or logic with us, and we have identified at least two checks directly to Joe Biden where we traced the money directly through the Biden influence peddling schemes. That is a fact. We have published evidence. This isn't like Adam Schiff and the Steele dossier where he, you just make stuff up. We have produced bank records, and bank records don't lie. So Mr. Biden mocked our legitimate congressional impeachment inquiry and flew to D.C. to hang out outside of Congress and did not show his face for a deposition. He is not in compliance. He openly defied a congressional subpoena. Do any other members wish to speak on this amendment? Um, Mr. Chairman. Chair, Chair recognizes Mr. Raskin. Um, I, I, I want to yield back to Mr. Goldman. Before I do, I just want to pose a question to you. When you said that there was documented checks involving the president in an influence scheme, are you referring to the auto loan repayment checks between Joe and Hunter Biden? You mean the Porsche he got from Uzbekistan? What, which auto are you? I, I don't know what kind of car, but are, are those the checks that you're referring the, to? The checks we're referring to were uh, a check for $200,000 that came through the influence peddling scheme with AmeriCorps Health and the $40,000 check that came through the influence peddling scheme with China, where I believe Mr. Bobulinski has stated publicly was a company that Joe Biden was supposed to be 10% owner. Okay, I'll reclaim my time. I think... In both cases, I mean, there were a lot of words there, Mr. Mr. Chairman, uh, but I think you're referring to the auto loan repayment with Hunter Biden. You're referring to the James Biden repayment. But <clears throat> if you've got documented receipts of foreign governments giving money directly to President Joe Biden, that's an outrageous violation of the Monuments Clause, like the $7.8 million that Donald Trump pocketed while he was president, which for some reason you guys don't care about because you think the Constitution only applies to Democrats and not to Donald Trump because, hey, that, you know, that's an that's a identifying characteristic of an authoritarian political party. It's got uh, a charismatic leader whose word is considered above the Constitution, above the rule of law. You refuse to accept the results of democratic elections that don't go your way if you're an authoritarian party. And then you refuse to disavow or you embrace political violence as an instrument for obtaining and maintaining political power. So you guys didn't like when uh, President Biden said that your party under Donald Trump has fallen into semi-fascist ways of operation. If the shoe semi-fits, you semi-wear it, okay? Now, I'd like to yield back to uh, Mr. Would Goldman. the gentleman yield to a question? Well, the, um, yeah, I'll take okay. a quick question. Good, I just want to clarify. We, we have a wire that went directly from CEFC, which banks have identified as a state-owned entity from China, that this wire went from CEFC to Hunter Biden, then to Joe Biden for $40,000. Okay. Joe Biden has been directly implicated in the family okay. influence peddling scheme at least okay, three I, times. I, I, no, you, you haven't. You, 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 you have not, I've not, not ever seen that. You, you have not well, produced the you, bank memo. You, you have not you, produced that. The 40000 is for Jim Biden. But, 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 no, 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 no. The 200000 is from is for from Jim Biden. The 40000 is from Hunter Biden. All right, but please produce I, the I documentation. We have, I, I think, we have four bank well, memorandums. You give it to the members of this committee and... Four you, bank memorandums. Okay, I'll, I'll reclaim four. my time, Mr. There Chairman. has never been a more subsidized I'm saving my time. You go ahead, but I'm saving my time. In the seven years I've been in Congress. All right, let me say this. The Democrats undertook a serious investigation despite every effort by the chairman to undermine it, and we determined there were $7.8 million documented receipts from foreign governments to Donald Trump. You guys don't care about that. That's unfortunate. Will the yield? But if you've got documents. Will the ranking member yield? Yeah, we will in just a moment. Let me make my point, okay? Uh, if you have documented receipts of foreign governments writing checks or giving credit card payments to Joe Biden, show it to us. We've been at this for a year now. We haven't seen anything. Then we show you in our more than 100-page report the documented receipts of money going to Donald Trump, but you don't care about it. In other words, you don't care about the principle that our government leaders should not be on the take from foreign governments. That's outrageous. Well, the because I, I, I will yield. oppose any government official of any political party who's on the take with money from foreign governments, well, and I hope you, you would join me in that. And yet we've shown it to you, and yet you guys don't care about it. 
I mean, that's just unfathomable to me. Now, at least the, the Trump family has responded to it. Well, I mean, the they're very nervous about it. You know what Trump said? The Trump's people say, well, he didn't take his $400,000 government salary. You know what? That's the only thing you're allowed to take is your salary from Americans, not money from corrupt Saudi monarchs who order the assassination of journalists, not from Chinese communist bureaucrats crushing the human rights Liam. of people in Tibet and the Uyghurs. You're not supposed to be on the take from those governments. That's what our Constitution says. Then they say, well, we return the profits. These guys don't, these guys think it's, oh, well, if it's a hotel, they could just keep the money. At least the Trump family understands some lawyer told them what the Constitution says. We return the profits. Well, guess what? They didn't give us the accounting of the profits, and that's not what the Constitution says. The Constitution says you can't take any payments at all from a foreign government without going to the Congress of the United States. It's not that you can't keep the profits from foreign governments. Do you guys understand what you're doing here? You're putting that Gentlemen, White House Gentlemen, time's state. expired. Chair, recognize Mr. Timmon from uh, South Carolina. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. My colleagues across the aisle missed the point here. The Trump family has uh, pre-existing businesses built over decades, hotels all over the world, and President Trump divested himself of control over those businesses to his children, and business uh, arms link transactions between foreign governments and between uh, the Trump International Hotel chain, it, there's actually an arms link transaction. They're getting hotel rooms, they're getting food and uh, whatever from these hotels. So. The difference is this, the Biden family doesn't produce anything. They don't have anything. They don't have hotels. They don't have services rendered. There are none. Hunter Biden has said that he was on the board of Burisma and he has no qualifications. They actually cannot document any service rendered by the Biden family, whether it's Jim Biden, whether it's Hunter Biden. So that's the issue. The issue is that the Biden family, all they have is the big guy and his policy uh, favoritism. And that's why we're here. And I, I just think y'all are muddy in the water and it's not doing the American people justice. Would With the that, gentleman Chairman, yield? I yield back. Would the gentleman yield? Yes, I will yield to I thank the gentleman. I, I do want to point out that, to the point that Mr. Timmons was making, that the operation of the Trump Hotel was a legitimate <laughs> enterprise that was approved by this committee in 2013 <laughs> before President Trump was elected to office. Uh, but prior to that, it was the old post office that was losing $6 million per year. The turnaround was a plus $3 million that went to the federal government. And as Mr. Timmons pointed out, it was divested to the family, to the, to the children. Well, it's not run by the president. But will you yield for a question on that? I'll yield for a question. Well, when you say it was divested, are you claiming that Donald Trump surrendered any ownership interest because he continued to own it. He put it into a trust for his sole benefit. He said the day-to-day -day management would be turned over to his sons, but he was still the beneficial owner of it, and he stayed involved, as we know, because he kept talking about all the business that was coming in from abroad. Well, the gentleman's question is legitimate in the context that most elected officials put their assets in trust for their own benefit after they leave office. But he it was not a blind forced, trust. He should not be forced to... Uh, divest himself of the asset, an asset that was approved by this committee. No, no I'm afraid Mr. not. You're I'm, referring I'm reclaiming, to... I'm reclaiming okay. the time yielded to me by Mr. Timmons to point out that what, what is happening right here should concern every American citizen because we refuse to prosecute, to investigate and prosecute corruption. We, we are constantly pounded about corruption in other countries, but we've got corruption right here that we do not... We, we form partisan sides on this thing, and we don't do our job. We have done, I've been here nine years and seven days and gone through multiple hearings in the Oversight Committee dealing with corruption, and it turns into a partisan uh, battle when we ought to be trying to make sure that we restore the American people's confidence in this government. What, we, what Hunter Biden should have done, he should have presented himself an answer to the subpoena. I'm not, I'm not trying to, to take sides in this. I want the evidence to speak for itself, and it will never speak for itself if we don't have people come before the committee as they're required to do. Will the gentleman yield gentlemen. for a question? Can I, would you yield for one final question? I'll yield to the gentleman. Thank you kindly. Um, and, and thank you for the spirit and the substance of your remarks, uh, which I think significantly uplift the tone of the conversation. Um, 
you would agree with me that the Emoluments Clause applies to government officials, and presumably you would agree with me that Hunter Biden is not and has never been a government official. So this is about a relative of the president, right? So we have Donald Trump, who's collecting $7.8 million at least. It's probably four or five times that much, and that's just during the presidency. But he, and he Mr. was Chairman, president. Me my time. And he was president. Mr. It's Mr. Timmons' uh, time. Uh, oh. Ranking member, do you have any evidence that Donald Trump received any of this money you're alleging that was received by the Trump Hotel Organization? Yes, he bragged about it. And in fact, he returned Sorry. what he called the profits to the government, which gave the game right, so, away. So $8 million in revenue, of which you don't know what the costs were associated with that. <laughs> and you don't have any evidence that the president actually received any of this money, by the way. Oh, we've got all the evidence. Read our, have you read oh, our so report yet, Mr. Timmons? What, what is the amount of money that you allege he's received? $7.8 million, million and it's a tiny true. fraction. That's just factually inaccurate. Have you read our report? That's revenue. It's not, I, it's not, I it's not profit. I teach you to read the report. I'll read any book you want me to read, any poem, any ghost story, whatever it is. <laughs> read the report, well, please. Well, gentlemen, read the report. Please. Uh, my time's expired, Mr. Chairman. Uh, gentlemen, time's expired. Before I recognize the next member, since Mr. Raskin's into reading, okay. I'd like to submit uh, to the record the last bank memorandum, the bank memorandum that details the Chinese wire that went to Hunter Biden, then to Joe Biden. It's in the bank memorandum. Very, this is this is substantive memorandum. This is the fourth memorandum. If you need the other three, we will resend them to you. Mr. Chairman, can I introduce without, something for the record too before we without, break? Yes, but right. without objection, we entered in the fourth bank memorandum into the record. Now you have something, Mr. Raskin. Yes, um, this comes from Newsweek. Uh, this is uh, Republican Congressman Andy Biggs warns his party has quote nothing to campaign on. All right, without objection, I object. I ordered. I object has nothing to do with subject at hand. Oh, well, it was very much discussed by the members today. I, I still object. Okay, could I call for a vote on that then, Mr. Chairman? Yeah? Yeah, we, I mean. All right, thank you. We, 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 Let's get our members we'll to say, we'll, we'll, we'll do a, all right, all those in favor of entering into the record, a new aye. story, say aye. Aye. All those opposed, no, no. It's I'd like a recorded vote, Mr. Chairman. Recorded vote. Recorded votes uh, called as previously announced. Further proceedings on the question will be postponed. We have votes coming up on the House floor. So, all right. Uh, okay. Uh, we have votes on the House floor. Have they been called? Votes on the House floor are going to be called in, in 30 minutes. We will recess until uh, the last vote has been uh, recorded. Then we'll reconvene and take up the amendments and the, and the votes. Will the gentleman and with yield? that, I will yield the balance of my time to my ranking member. Ms. Brown, thank you so much. You know, you started off by saying something pretty profound, which is we are here instead of doing the business of the American people because the Republicans have offered us no positive agenda in their year in office. We know we've wasted countless weeks in them just trying to pick a speaker. Um, and uh, we've wasted countless weeks with their inertia and their do-nothing policies. Um, but Ms. Brown, um, I don't know if you recall, I just don't want people having to take your word for it. I think numerous Republicans have gotten up on the floor of the House complaining about the fact that they have no agenda. I think our colleague Chip Roy <clears throat> from Texas said that the Republicans have not given him one thing, a single thing, I remember him saying, to campaign on. Um, so I just want to ask you, when you're saying that they have no agenda, that's not a partisan point. You're getting that from Republicans, aren't you? That is correct. One of, the, uh, one of our colleagues said that uh, there was Trump derangement syndrome. And of course, Trump derangement begins with Donald Trump himself. He thinks he has a legal right to assassinate US citizens. Um, he thinks he can grab women by their genitals, although that's not the word that he used. Uh, he's, he said that if Joe Biden is reelected president, there will be World War II. Um, he is obviously deranged and disoriented, but the real Trump derangement syndrome that I see is those people who cannot break from Donald Trump after he's proven himself to be completely and totally unworthy of your support.
because I'm looking at talented, gifted people on the other side of the aisle, the ones who have not left Congress in frustration or because they've broken with Donald Trump and clashed with him. But I'm still looking at people who have their wits about them, I think, but you're acting like cult members, like you're sleeping on the basement of a cult, listening to tapes all night. And I beg you to get over your Trump derangement syndrome. Thank you very much for yielding, Ms. Brown. Chair, recognize Mr. Donald from Florida for five minutes. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. A, a couple of things. First, it was said in this hearing, uh, Mr. Chairman, about you specifically, that you repeatedly said you would give uh, Mr. Biden any opportunity he could choose which one to come and speak in front of this committee. He could do it by deposition. He could do it by open hearing. It was up to him. The truth of the matter, though, is, members, is that the chairman's words are not binding. Like, no other member's words of Congress are really not binding. The binding article. Point of order. Does the chairman agree not, with that? Point of order. Does the chairman agree? Are you going to restore my time? Point of order. Just point of order. Okay. Does the chairman agree that the chairman's words are not binding on the committee? That's, That's not a point of like, order. It's not, it has nothing to do with the order of this hearing. Thank you. Uh, can I go back to four minutes and 34 seconds? That's where I was before I was interrupted by Mr. Raskin. Yes. Re reset the Thank clock. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. What is binding is the actual written document, the written language in the subpoena, because a subpoena from this committee is also signed off on by the clerk of the House. That is the binding document that matters here. That is what governs. That's number one. Number two that was said in this hearing. It was said that our witnesses said that there was no basis for an impeachment. But remember, members on the Democrat side of the aisle, what was said by Mr. Turley at the time was that there was plenty of evidence for the continuation of an impeachment inquiry. And the purpose of that hearing was the relevance basis for an impeachment inquiry. The House has now voted for an impeachment inquiry. And one of the first things that the House did after the vote of an impeachment inquiry was to subpoena Hunter Biden to appear. Hunter Biden is, 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 has evaded that subpoena. So flagrantly did he evade it that he decided to show up at the Senate side to give a press conference, and Eric Swalwell, a member of the House, helped him get that time on the Senate side to give a press conference. That's a flagrant violation of a congressional subpoena. Secondarily, he has the gall to show up here when we're actually discussing contempt. And he didn't stay. He was sitting right over there. He's not here now. He said he wants to talk. He could have stayed through the whole proceeding. He chose to leave. That's his business. But he was subpoenaed to come here. Back in December, he chose not to of his own volition. He's in violation of that subpoena, a subpoena that was executed with the signature of the clerk of the House of Representatives. That is the document that is binding. That's what we work off of. Mr. Mr. Chairman, I actually want to submit for the record an article from The Hill written by jo Jonathan Turley, and it is titled Eric Swalwell and the Politics of Contempt. With that objection to order. Thank you. I'm glad something got admitted to the record. Last, a uh, couple other points. One quick point I want to make, and this is in reference to the minority's uh, report about this $7.8 uh, million. I want the minority to understand one very important distinction between President Biden and President Trump. President Trump has an international real estate portfolio that he has amassed over decades. I'm quite sure if you go back through all of the hotel receipts before he was president of the United States that you had foreign dignitaries staying at Trump hotels all across the, all across the world. Will the gentleman yield? I'm not going to yield, Mr. Raskin. I'm making a point. Because they're actually very nice hotels. They look good. People like staying there. Um, the, president the, Trump was not running the Trump Organization when he was president of the United States. To my recollection, Eric Trump, the president's son, was actually running the Trump Organization when President Trump was president of the United States. So if he had a portfolio of hotels and people choose, you know, through Expedia, through Kayak, through Hotels.com, if they choose to go and stay there, how is that the president being in violation of what the emoluments cause? That's what you're citing? Stop. Ladies and gentlemen, America, this is ridiculous. The Biden family has no business. They've never had a business except for politics. And the one thing that the Oversight Committee, in conjunction with the Ways and Means Committee and in conjunction with the Judiciary Committee, has always been able to demonstrate is that they shook down foreign nations for millions, millions, 26 million at the latest count, and growing, millions. And there was never any business entity involved except public corruption and a pay-for-play scheme. 
The House Oversight Committee would like to get to the bottom of this under the impeachment inquiry of the House. We have questions for Hunter Biden. We issued a subpoena for him to answer said questions. He ignored a congressional subpoena as a private citizen. There are many attorneys on the other side of the aisle. If you had one of your clients in your private practice ignore a congressional subpoena as a private citizen, you would advise them not to because they would be held in contempt and they would actually be punished by the Department of Justice. So I find it interesting well, the to see today. Yield, so I'm can not going to yield, Mr. Goldman, because I had a question for you earlier. You didn't want to take my question, so I'm not going to take yours. Thank you. So in closing, I will say private citizens, yes, they have a responsibility to answer congressional subpoenas. They do. Hunter Biden had it and he was flagrant. He decided to give a press conference. So we're gonna do this business and he should be held in contempt by the full House of Representatives. I yield back, Mr. Chairman. Very good. Chair now recognize Ms. Norton from Washington, D.C. for five minutes. I, I, I yield my, I, my five minutes to Mr. Raskin. I would like to thank the distinguished delegate from the District of Columbia and I need to correct the record because of several false statements made about the Foreign Emoluments Clause, Article 1, Section 9, Clause 8, although I do uh, appreciate the gentleman from Florida's attempt to at least engage on the matter of substance that uh, was raised so powerfully by Ms. Crockett. Now let's start with this. Article 1, Section 9, Clause 8 says that the, neither the president nor any member of Congress can receive a present in emolument, which means a payment, an office or a title from a prince, a king, a foreign government, quote, Mr. Donald, of any kind whatever of any kind, whatever, without going to Congress first and obtaining the consent of Congress. There's no hotel exception, Mr. Donald, to the Foreign Emoluments Clause. There's no international real estate syndicate exception to the Foreign Emoluments Clause, Mr. Donald. And also, I, I will take you up on your challenge to see whether uh, the Trump Hotel in Washington, the Trump Hotel in Las Vegas, the Trump Hotel on Fifth Avenue, the Trump Hotel at UN Plaza, the four of the more than 500 businesses that we got documentation for, whether they actually had the same level of business coming from Saudi Arabia, the communist bureaucrats of China, who were the leading spender, as you know, if you've read our report, the United Arab Emirates, Indonesia, India, Egypt, and so on. I, I will, we will make that comparison about what was done before. If you get the chairman to call off the ban on further documents coming from Mazar. So Have you ever we, stayed at a Trump hotel, Mr. Ex Rassi? Excuse No, and I would, never would stay at a Trump hotel. I've got too much self-respect and stay concern at for hotels. hygiene. So, but in any event, uh, Mr. Donald, you're totally wrong about what the Foreign Emoluments Clause stands for. Uh, Abraham Lincoln was given two elephant tusks by the King of Siam during the Civil War, and he liked them very much. He wanted to keep them, but he went to Congress which is what every other president did before and every president did since, right up until Donald Trump, and he asked whether he could keep the tusks in Congress, though they loved Honest Abe, said, no, you can't keep them. I mean, John F. Kennedy was, was uh, offered citizenship by the people of Ireland because they loved him so much, and he refused to take it, saying that even though it didn't violate the letter of the Monuments Clause, it violated the spirit of the Monuments Clause. And Donald Trump converted the presidency into an instrument for self-enrichment. He raked in millions of dollars from the most corrupt governments on earth who came in with specific favor favors that we document in our report that they got from Donald Trump. I beseech my colleagues, I will read any book, any magazine, any speech you've given that you want me to read, read this report and come back and tell me if you think Donald Trump did the right thing in converting the White House into a for-profit operation. No other president in American history has come anywhere close. And you ask why he's so determined to stay in office that he would unleash violence against his own vice president, the brother of your colleague, of our colleague. Why would he do that? It's because it was a money-making operation and it was, a, it was a great business grift for a guy who went bankrupt several times. And yet, out of some misguided partisan loyalty, you're gonna stick with him. I don't even know why you stick with him. He was a Democrat longer than he was a Republican. He wanted to run for president on the Reform Party. You guys have been taken over by an absolute con man. And now you're acting like members of a religious cult who don't even remember how you got in in the first place. We say return the profits, Donald Trump, $7.8 million. I've got a letter, uh, Mr. Chairman, I'm gonna share with you telling Donald Trump to return these $7.8 million. It's a small fraction of what he raked in. We wanna know about the other two years in office. We wanna know about 
uh, the other businesses, not just those four that we were able to get information on, and we want to know about every country on Earth, not just the 20 uh, autocracies and dictatorships that we found. This is our government. This is our Constitution. And we're going to stand up for it against Donald Trump and anybody who follows him to the path of oblivion. Abraham Lincoln started your party as a third party to replace the Whigs because they wouldn't take a moral stand against slavery. It was a pro-freedom, anti-slavery, pro-union, pro-honesty party. And your party has been reduced to a corrupt, authoritarian cult of personality. And everybody does whatever Donald Trump tells them to do, which is what we're doing here today with this stupid attempt to hold Hunter Biden in contempt when he has come forward to say he will testify and give you everything you want as the chairman of the committee repeatedly offered in public. So forgive my outrage and indignation, but enough is enough. Let's get back to the business of the people, as Ms. Chair Brown Chair recognizes said. Mr. Higgins for five minutes. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Gentleman yields. Chair recognizes the gentlelady from Vermont, Ms. Balin. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I move to strike the last word. Gentlelady is recognized. Thank you. My constituents ask me all the time, you know, what's, what's the most difficult part of serving in Congress? And for me, it is confronting the deep cynicism. This hearing is not about transparency. It's not about accountability. You know, our committee has conducted 90 interviews or depositions this Congress, and to date, the chairman has released exactly one transcript. The one transcript that was released after we Democrats complained and asked him to release it to the Judiciary Committee in a hearing. The chairman won't let Hunter Biden testify publicly, and he hasn't been releasing the transcripts of interviews that have taken place. The public, as, as my colleague said, regular people deserve to know what this committee has been doing this Congress. I agree. The public, regular people, should see that in interview after interview, Republicans advance conspiracy theories wholly unsupported by evidence. Instead, the chairman continues to call witnesses behind closed doors, and I fear that's because the facts don't support the allegations that the evidence would actually show that Republicans put forward claims that are baseless and false. So let's talk more about those real people, those regular people who send us here to do work on their behalf. Not only are the chairman's investigations a cynical waste of time, but they have put the lives of regular people in danger. Witnesses that have appeared before this committee have testified that House Republicans have spread dangerous conspiracy theories about them, and it has led to threats against their families and against them. Regular people, regular Americans. For instance, after Chairman Jordan posted an edited video of her on Twitter, one witness who was nine months pregnant at the time had to get a restraining order against a man who repeatedly doxed her family. She had to disguise herself to go to prenatal visits because of the stalking and of the tens of thousands of death threats that she experienced. She ended up having to hire a private security firm that recommended that she not leave home. Witnesses who are members of law enforcement have testified that they've been docked, that they have gotten threats not just at work, but at their homes as well. And beyond that, witnesses have described threats to their families and to their children. They've described threatening letters being sent to their family members and having to move houses because their addresses have been posted online. Many of the 90 interviews that the committee has conducted this Congress have been with ordinary Americans, regular people who are just trying to do their jobs. Republican investigations this Congress have je jeopardized the health and the safety of everyday Americans, regular people the people who sent us here to do work on their behalf. This committee appears to be more interested in advancing conspir conspiracy theories than in doing our jobs, serving the people we represent, those regular people. The posturing here in this committee is rooted in a deep, dangerous cynicism, a cynicism that threatens our very democracy.
and it is very hard to watch. I yield back. The nature of a substitute as offered by Ms. Crockett of Texas. Without objection, the amendment is considered as read. I reserve a point of order. Uh, Ms. Crockett is recognized for five minutes to explain her amendment. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I'm in introducing this amendment to emphasize the importance of telling the truth. Chairman Comer has given us alternative facts about the testimony of Mr. Devin Archer provided to this committee, the Democrats and Republicans, but behind closed doors. Again, it's common sense not to trust my colleagues on the other side of the aisle when it comes to stating the facts, because they are the same ones that gave us alternative facts about the election, they gave us alternative facts about January 6th, and thus far they have given us alternative facts at least to the American people about their motivation for this impeachment inquiry. So I do have a few receipts that I'd like to go through. On December 6, 2023, Chairman Comer tweeted out that President Biden emailed with his son's business associates. But let me be clear, when consulting the transcript, it was determined that those were alternative facts. The actual facts found in Mr. Archer's transcribed interview show that President Biden was not involved in his son's business activities and that during his more than a decade long business relationship with Hunter Biden, Archer never witnessed President Biden have any involvement in his son's business dealings or take any official actions to benefit Hunter Biden or his businesses. And Archer never witnessed Hunter Biden discuss the substance of his business with his father or ask his father to take any official actions. Again, in August of 2023, Chair Comer stated in an interview to Newsmax that Mr. Archer, quote, admitted that the Burisma executives were squeezing Hunter Biden to try to do everything he could to get the prosecutors showed it Shokin fired because they were going after their corrupt energy company. And lo and behold, a few days later, Joe Biden actually did that. After consulting the transcript, yet again, it was determined another alternative fact. The actual facts are that Mr. Archer specifically spoke about Ukraine and Hunter Biden's role with Burisma, the Ukrainian energy company on whose board they both served, and repeatedly stated Hunter Biden never discussed Burisma with his father and never asked his father to take an official action to benefit him or Burisma. Mr. Archer further stated that he had no reason to believe Vice President Biden's call for Shokin's removal was driven by anything other than the U.S. government's anti-corruption policy in Ukraine. Chairman Comer again tweeted, he loves his Twitter, on December 6th that President Biden was on speakerphone with the Biden family business associates over 20 times. We consulted the transcript and it was determined again, another alternative fact. Mr. Archer's transcribed interview actually states that while Hunter Biden spoke frequently with his father, sometimes when Hunter Biden was with other people, Mr. Archer stated he never witnessed any discussion of substantive business during these calls. Again, Chair Comer's association with reality about information brought forth by witnesses he demanded come in. Well, Chair Comer, we spun it again about Mr. Archer's statements when it came down to President Biden. When we consult the transcript over and over and over, it's been determined that the facts that have been laid out by the members of this committee on the Republican side have been alternative facts. When Mr. Archer was directly asked during the transcribed interview if President Biden was the brand, Mr. Archer clarified that DC was the brand and that he and Hunter Biden helped to assemble a team of attorneys, lobbyists, and public officials, public affairs professional, professionals to handle Burisma's government relations and President Biden was not part of the DC team. It is no wonder that Hunter Biden wanted to come before everyone in public because Mr. Chairman, it is vital that we continually have to set the record straight and make sure that alternative facts are not what's being handed out to the American people, but instead the facts, the real facts, reality. Well, the gentleman. I would also yield. like to, yes. Okay, just, sorry. just for a quick question, Ms. Crockett, and I thank you for that illuminating intervention because I'm starting to wonder if the Russian hoax should apply to the lie about Burisma, which uh, sits at the very heart of this investigation. That's the real hoax, isn't it? In fact, uh, 
In fact, the, uh, Lev Parnas, who helped make it up, he's been out there begging Chairman Comer and the Republicans to end this wild goose chase and to have him come testify about how they try to concoct the lie in the first place. And yet, that's a witness that they don't want to hear from. I thank you. I yield back to you, Ms. Carter. They don't want to hear that. And, and if we care about making sure that the American people know that we have transparency and truth on this committee, then I would implore this committee to release the transcripts publicly instead of tweeting out alternative facts about what has been testified to. Mr. Chairman. Uh, as previously approved, each side has... Mr. As Chairman. previously approved, each side has... Two with my friend and colleague, the gentleman from Texas, that this is a sad day, but... Uh, perhaps sad for different reasons. This, this whole process has become such a sham. The underlying purpose at the beginning of these hearings was that, um, as, as was the title of the, one of the first hearings we had, a hearing on the basis for an impeachment inquiry against President Joseph R. Biden. And at that hearing, the Republicans and the Democrats had an opportunity to bring witnesses forward that would actually provide evidence to the committee so that we could make a decision to substantiate or, or, or to undermine the, the call for an impeachment. And we sat in this hearing, and the Republicans brought their witnesses in. And, and, I, and I have to admit, witnesses that had considerable experience and expertise and, and impressive resumes. And so we asked them, so this is the big moment. We asked these expert witnesses that the Republicans had brought in, are there any basis or, or underpinnings that would warrant an impeachment inquiry at this point? And these witnesses had reviewed almost all of the 14,000 documents that have been provided, transaction reports, uh, treasury reports, and I'll give you the answers. These are the Republican witnesses. This is uh, Jonathan Turley and uh, I think Bruce Dubinsky with a consultant. One witness said, and I quote him, he did not believe that any of the current evidence would support articles of an impeachment, close quote. That's the Republican witness that you had your moment. You had your moment to would, bring would, in the witnesses. Would the gentleman gonna, yield? No, I will not yield. I will not yield. The other witness that the Republicans brought forward against President Biden, he said under questioning he had no basis to even suggest that, was that there was corruption, fraud, or any wrongdoing on the part of the president. Now, I, I do, I, we are all familiar with Hunter Biden's, uh, his conduct. There have been explanations of his drug addiction that have been widely publicized. Something that maybe a few families of members of this committee might be familiar with. When people go sideways because they're, they're addicted to drugs. But the very moment to, to pursue the, the underlying purpose of these hearings has been completely diverted. There's been no evidence brought forward against the President of the United States. And as to this witness coming here today or his reluctance to, to submit himself to private investigations can be, I think, credibly explained given the lack of trust that has surrounded these hearings. There have been story after story about leaks coming from those private interviews blatant misinformation and disinformation that the chairman and other members 
of the committee have offered to the press so-called bombshells. That's what it was on Fox TV. Bombshells turned out to be a dud, turned out to be completely false. But, but under the auspices of this committee, those members, including the chairman, put out these stories in the press because they could not be refuted. They were not subject to cross-examination. They were not provided for or provided by any credible witness that was just made up in the minds of the chairman of, of those members. That's why this gentleman wanted to testify in public so someone could not distort uh, his statements and leak them wrongfully to the press. Mr. Chairman. Chair, Chair now recognizes Ms. Luna for five minutes. This contempt proceeding is about upholding the rule of law. You know, with recent